Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Britain's royal family now at Balmoral Castle amidst concern for Queen's health. Two-year-old shot in domestic dispute in St. Catherine. And later in sports, Shelley and Fraser Price and Sharika Jackson to meet in Diamond League 100 meter final in Zurich this afternoon. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. We begin with news on the local scene. A domestic dispute in Bellis Gates in Catherine has left a man dead and his two-year-old daughter battling for life in hospital. Sandra Williams has the details. Tonight, the Browns Hall Police in St. Catherine received reports that there was a physical altercation between a man and his common-law wife who he was visiting. The man, who was armed with a gun, left the house with their two-year-old daughter. When I passed with the baby, we see him because we did our enzo, we enzo. Mm -hmm. So we did it, and we see him pass with the baby and father run, come down. The baby grandfather run, come down and set away. You know, see the man that go with the baby? So when he hold the baby, you know, he left hand and he have him right hand hold on the gun. So we couldn't move to him. So he walk and gone. In their attempt to respond to the incident, the lawmen were fired at. When the shooting subsided, it was discovered that front bedroom window and the house was damaged. That scene was processed. Other police personnel were called in and, in fact, specialized operations. Um, and the SWAT team were, were mobilized to the location. But it wasn't until this morning that a search was launched for the two. During the search in, in the area, we also heard other gunshots. Uh, eventually, they, 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 they found the lifeless body of the suspect. And uh, the child. This is the window that the lady said that the, the child was rushed to the Bustamante Hospital for Children, where it was later discovered that she had been shot in the abdomen. At news time, she was still undergoing surgery. The man has since been identified as former security guard, 45 year old Cleon Black. It understood that the incident stems from a dispute on Sunday between the child's parents. We hear about it. We hear about the dispute. Yeah, we hear about the dispute. Say, him come there and drive with the woman the other day. And go beat up the woman. Can't tell me see back the woman, the woman all can't move. You find say, him do something to the lady. The incident has angered residents in the community. We feel bad, man, because they don't see no go on in our community. I him come, you know, and just when you have a gun, the people them, the people them are rushing, you know. The people them are rushing, you know, but just when you have a gun, the people them. In our community, we could take the picnic from him, but for your ears, him have gun on him. Hold the picnic and hold the gun. So you turn back to your ox. When the father say, Where are going to the picnic? And we say, Yo, where are going to the people them picnic? Say, Yo, a fool no picnic. And just turn back and gone. Commanding officer of the St. Catherine North Police, Superintendent Howard Chambers, noted that in recent weeks there has been a spate of domestic disputes in the parish, hence this appeal. We are asking citizens, you know, once you see or uh, observe your neighbors in this situation, please don't wait out, you know, activate, call, get active, call the police, call some counselors, call the pastor to get involved. And for persons who are going through these type of situations, don't believe that you can deal with it on your own. You know, we have you know, to ask for intervention. You know, we have a lot of intervention agencies. You know, the police, call the police, call um, counselors, call past the pastoral fraternity, and, and get them involved. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. All eyes are on Britain this afternoon as Buckingham Palace has announced that Queen Elizabeth II's doctors are concerned for her health and have recommended she remains under medical supervision. We go to the CNN for an update. It's extraordinary given just how short that statement was from Buckingham Palace saying, maybe you can bring it up, that the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision and the added comment that the Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. But that was only a couple of hours ago, and I can tell you that right here uh, we are seeing so many camera positions rushedly being set up in the palace. And not 
telling us, uh, not steering us away really from being concerned about the Queen's health. And that is what is different, I think, from the many, many times that we have heard speculation or rumour about the Queen's health. And the Palace have for a long time now told us they will not give us a running commentary on the Queen's health. You'll remember October last year when the Queen underwent uh, a night in hospital for some undisclosed tests. We weren't told about it until she returned to Windsor Castle. And ever since then, really, we've been told that she has episodic mobility issues, but that's about it. So there have been moments, haven't there, where we've seen Her Majesty walk out with a walking stick, for instance, and the palace have told us that is just for her to remain comfortable. There have been occasions when she's had to cancel events. During the Jubilee coverage, we were told that we would find out on a day-by-day -day basis whether the Queen felt comfortable enough to cover it. But that's all we've ever really had in terms of her specific health conditions. Clearly today there is huge concern. Following that short statement, to hear that all the family members have been told and that her children and Prince William and Prince Harry and his wife are all travelling to Balmoral, I think that just goes to show how concerned they are and that they are willing and happy for the British public and for the world to know. In the meantime, there have been reactions across the globe following the announcement of the Queen's ill health. Newly elected Prime Minister, British Prime Minister Liz Truss tweeted, quote, the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime. My thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and, and her family at this time. Now, in a social media tweet, Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland said, quote, on behalf of every nation and citizen of the Commonwealth family, I send my best wishes to Her Majesty and the royal family. She will remain in my prayers, end quote. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said, quote, My thoughts and the thoughts of Canadians across the country are with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II at this time. We are wishing her well and sending our best to the royal family, end quote. Now back home, Glean economist Audrey Hinchcliffe believes that easy name recognition by members of the public played a significant role in the ratings received by the shadow cabinet in the latest RGR Gleaner Don Anderson poll. She says the portfolios in the shadow cabinet are not well known, so the results were mostly based on the personalities involved. The poll, conducted from July 16 to 25, showed Jamaicans rated opposition spokesman on national security Peter Bunting as the worst performing shadow minister, while MP for St. Anne South East Lisa Hanna was voted best performing. Another 8% singled out opposition leader Mark Golding as the worst performing shadow minister, while 6% said opposition spokesman on education Damon Crawford was the worst performer. Ms. Hinchcliffe asserts that the results may not have shown whether these persons were actually performing. It, it does seem to me that um, perhaps the purpose of the shadow cabinet, where I was trying to explain the person that I know, and because I know the, their area, which I don't think the, what is reflected in the poll here really speaks to whether they are performing in their role of the shadow cabinet or not. It just comes down to, I think we all agree that it's name recognition because I was looking at what they are saying. Is it contributing to the information that I require? Because what the, the order in which they fall here does not tell me that they are performing at all. Not making enough. The cries of taxi operators about the transport centre in Linsett St. Catherine that local authorities are insisting they use as part of efforts to restore order in the busy town centre. At a protest on Monday over new traffic changes in Linstead, taxi operators detailed inadequacies at the facility. Krista Campbell reports. More taxis than space for them to park. It's the main reason taxi operators in Linstead St. Catherine have been opposing the local authorities who insist they must pick up and drop off passengers in the facility as they try to return order to the town centre. There are two park facilities in Linstead and if all the cars are to go there, we can't hold it. What the police has been saying is that um, every taxi can't go in there at the same time. We should work at different hours, but that's impossible. So we have been taking chances letting off a passenger to, 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 to at the post office or the market area. We try to comply by parking properly. But if we do all of that, you're liable to, to two tickets. Setting down passengers are taking up. It used to be $800. We are taxi man. We won't even bother to go to court to, to, to really 
defend it, right? Now it's $2,500. Back inside the transportation center, the operators also have an issue with the designation of lanes for specific taxi routes. Spanish town have our own line, guys will have their own line, you have their own line, and I own bag walk, and I own say one line. For time and tread with Yark Street. That is ridiculous and cheesy. The operators want these and other issues addressed when they meet with the police and other local authorities on Sunday. For those who pay $200 to use the park every day, the returns are low and slow in coming. We go and park in, the, in, in there and not even one passenger. I mean, for hours I took one passenger out there and is that, it, the, the fact is that she... She's not from Chedway. She didn't know where to take the taxi. She ended up in there. But not everyone shares that concern. We will, we will get the work inside the police is here and transport is here, so it's better. Pointing to the murder of two of their colleagues at the bus park in two separate incidents, the taxi operators maintain safety is another major concern. The back road that they gave us to drive on, though it becomes a risk factor again because taxi man get shot on their ears when they back road a couple of months ago. The same back road they put upon taxi operator get shot around here. So it means passengers at risk and drivers at risk. As we know there's a challenge sometimes in the township where from our roads we have some illegal activities that takes place there. We as the police have been clamped you know, on some of these activities for the past months now. So we are seeing a, a decline and a reduction in some of these incidents. The opening hours of the transportation centre have been extended to between 5 in the morning and 10 at night with increased security for municipal and regular police. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. Issues stemming from a pileup of uncollected garbage are escalating again with more concerns from St. Thomas. The issue has led residents living in Phase 4 of Arkid Estate, Poorman's Corner in the parish, to demand better garbage collection from the authorities. This large pile of garbage is not only aesthetically unappealing, but it's also affecting their livelihood. According to one resident, he has observed a pattern among the collectors. This is coming like I'm a yard gate. My yard gate can't stay so, Bridget. Right. My yard gate can't stay so. Look, look at the scheme. Look at the scheme. Look over there, sir. A pampas and all them, something there, they all, but the dog, they might draw them out. The garbage truck come and all them do a take up. Just the front. I don't know if I fool them full or what. And then go and leave it same way. I have been seeing them over and over pass. He added that residents within the community are also contributing to the pileup. Every night, the vehicle, they, 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 they chop people and come and fill it up with pure garbage. When they take a stack of dead dog, everything in night. You can't drive past. I just right there, so I'm living on my gateway. This you can't be like dump in front of people's gateway, man. Look on it, look, look on a man there, yard right there. So, eh? we fly now, come out here, so I'm going to the kitchen there. So, I walk out to him right there. So, now, eh? not be a sickness or disease that, eh? No, man, this can't stay so, Bridging. This can't stay so. They have to do something about this, man. Amid ongoing debate about the Jamaica training local persons for the local and overseas labor markets, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is insisting that Jamaica has enough institutions to do so. He wants the country to be deliberate in planning and getting it done. Recently, we were approached by several cruise ship companies who wanted labor to restart their industry. And they came to us and said, we need somewhere in the region of 10,000 workers. And we said to them, listen, our tourism industry can't suffer because we are exporting our... The suggestion to train workers for overseas markets increased with the mass exodus of teachers this year. Now, Mr. Honus also pointed to the benefits of deliberately training locals for those markets. As your training menu, Sister Susan, it's very impressive. You will be offering training and apprenticeship. And I'm going to speak a little bit about apprenticeship in food preparation and the culinary arts, which is absolutely important. Mr. Holness was speaking at the launch of the St. John Bosco Vocational Training Center and the Sister Susan Fraser RSM Educational Complex in Hatfield, Manchester, recently. 
For a peek into the economy, here is Codian Barrett with the Business Minute. In keeping with the government's pledge to assist new farmers with land preparation, Agriculture Minister Pernell Charles Jr. announced that a special incentive program valued at $63 million has been set up. We can announce that the first tranche of $20 million has been issued by the ministry to RADA with 5,000 farmers that will get the opportunity for at least one acre of land preparation free of cost. He was speaking in Parliament on Wednesday. In global economy, UK's new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, unveiled a £150 billion energy plan to limit increases in energy bills. Typical household energy bills have been capped at £2,500 a year and a limited six-month support plan for businesses. It is unclear how long the household support will last, but the government is expected to borrow at least £100 billion to pay for it. It was projected that a typical household's annual gas and electricity bill would rise from £1,900 to close to £3,600 in October. And that's it for the business. This minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And that's the Midday News. I'm Shane Masters. Join us at 7 for Prime Time News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.